Hey everybody, it's Will here. Welcome back to another episode of the Blackbird Intelligence YouTube channel. As always, we're going to be going over some market trends from this week, as well as stuff to look at moving forward that you may find important. So to start off, it seems like Twitter sentiment's pretty, uh, pretty fearful, kind of on edge. Um, you know, however, it's always important that we kind of look at everything objectively and unemotionally uh, before we come to any conclusions and kind of our market outlook. So first, we'll kind of look at some short-term data, as well as we'll, you know, kind of move to zooming it out to kind of illustrate the, the macro on-chain setup. So two weeks ago, we talked about this volatility squeeze that we entered that's highlighted by this uh, yellow shaded area. Um, and so we talked about how it was forming and how oftentimes they, they tend to break in one direction to kind of grab the liquidity from breakout traders before reversing. So you'll see here, broke out, reversed. Here, broke out, reversed. Here, broke out, reversed. And recently, we were smack dab in the middle of the bands two weeks ago. I said, keep out, keep it, keep an eye out for you know, where this kind of starts to move because we've had this you know, repeating pattern where it kind of reverts that initial move. So when we started moving up, I, I put out a Twitter post and basically said, is it, is it happening again, right? Um, and of course, everyone was like, no, you know, no, we're mooning. You know, this time is different. Um, and then we actually got a reversal. So, um, you know, we, we were kind of watching out for this as well as, you know, we were kind of due for, for a retest on some of these metrics like SOPR and, and uh, funding. So, I mean, not entirely surprising to, to you know, kind of see a correction here. Um, you know, with, with that being said, I, I don't think this move was really liquidation driven. Um, you know, we've had several major moves like this one back here is like the, the last major one that, that kind of comes to mind uh, when we had this failed break above the, the point of break down from from uh, from May when we kind of broke up to like 53 or 54 K and then reversed. Um, that was a large liquidation cascade. Um, what we've had recently is just over the last couple of days is just been a lot of spot selling. Um, so believe it or not, some people actually sell their Bitcoin. <laughs> um, and so you've seen a lot of selling, especially from Binance. I mean, I'm sorry, from Bitfinex. Um, so when, when you look at, you know, kind of the uh, rate of, of what, you know, Bitfinex is trading at measured up against other exchanges, they've been trading at a discount for, for several days now. One of the first red flags that we were, that, well, the, the, something that we talk about often, but um, I was going to say we were looking at, I was looking at um, on Tuesday was the fact that funding was rising while price was dropping. Uh, so, you know, oftentimes these kind of dislocations between funding and price tend to resolve in the direction of price, which this did. Uh, but, you know, I, I would love to see funding flip negative. Um, overall, though, I'm just trying to illustrate that uh, we've seen funding really kind of neutralize um, you know, sometimes, you know, in a, in a really strong bullish trend, like sometimes that's just the best you're going to get, but would love to, you know, get a, get a flip uh, negative. And that doesn't necessarily mean fully that, um, you know, the, the market's being shorted. It can mean that it can also mean that, you know, there's a liquidation cascade. So that just drives the, the per price lower than the spot index price. But regardless, um, you know, buying, buying in a, in a state of negative funding during a really strong, you know, bull market is, is not a bad idea. Next up, we'll look at our family of SOPR metrics, which is our spent output profit ratio. Um, in specific, we're going to start first with short-term uh, short-term holder SOPR, uh, and this is a good oscillator to kind of identify some buy the dip or fade the rally opportunities, given that we've kind of ident identified this broader trend using other kind of macro macro metrics. Uh, and so, we fully reset this metric, as you can see right here in the bottom right. Meaning that if we correct, uh, if we're correct about the broader market structure being bullish, we're close to bottoming out if we haven't already. I uh, put this out uh, this morning. And so it does actually look like we kind of found a little local bottom here. Uh, and so this was kind of indicative of that with short term holder soper. Of course, you know, if, 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 if you, you know, are unsure about the broader market trend, then um, it's, it's not always useful to buy the dips below one because as you can see over summer, we flipped into, you know, bear territory then. Um, you know, we, we just stayed below one for a long period of time and each rally up to one got faded. Um, but, you know, in, in strong bull rallies, as you can see from earlier this year and the last year, these dips below one are, are good buy opportunities. Next up, we look at weekly SOPR. Weekly SOPR paints a similar picture. We got our bull trend confirmation at the end of September. And I, I just I just threw this in here to just say, you know, it wouldn't hurt to get another reset or retest of one if we do get one last leg down. As you can see, we cover a little bit of space between one, uh, but we have gotten a nice little reset so far. And just for reference, what you don't want to see is a break below one and then underside retest of one. So, you know, the way to think about this is just if, you know, if you divide 10 by 10, when, 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 you, when, the, uh, when the profit and, and loss are kind of neutralizing each other out, uh, that's when you're in that, at this one threshold. So this is neutral. We're not stating a, trading in a state of profit or loss. 
When we're above, we're trading a state of profit, below state of loss. Uh, so as you can see at the end of last year, we had a confirmation of trend. Then we had a bearish divergence as the oscillator made lower highs. Meanwhile, price made higher highs, came down, corrected, got this bearish break uh, in May. And then from that, we got confirmation about a couple of weeks later on this kind of failed breakout above the range over summer. As you can see, we got rejected on this underside retest of one, got a second uh, failed underside retest of one, and then a bullish break actually about a week later. Um, and from there, so now, you know, now we flip to bearish territory, I mean, bullish territory, uh, but now we are waiting for that confirmation. And we did get that at the end of September, as you can see right here. So, you know, the point I'm just trying to make is it'd be awesome to buy along one, but, you know, when you look at the end of the year, we just continue to set higher lows as this kind of trended upwards. So. Next up, we look at short-term holder uh, profit loss ratio. This is another oscillator, very similar to SOPR. But instead, it just compares the amount of profit or loss that market participants are sitting in and, and you know, takes into account unrealized profit loss rather than the actual spent outputs on a given day. Uh, so SOPR looks at uh, you know, the, the actual profit and loss that's being realized on every given day uh, versus this metric is just looking at the total you know, profit or loss that these guys are holding. So similar to week, weekly SOPR, we got another bullish confirmation in late summer. I'm sorry, late September, uh, but we'd love to get another opportunity to buy one along the one threshold, similar to the, the previous two metrics we looked at. Note in late 2020, we got two retests or confirmation, bullish confirmation retests uh, before continuation. And, you know, I, I threw this in here just to say, you know, you want to look for comp, you want to look for confluence. Uh, you know, what we want to look for is like multiple metrics that are kind of telling us the same thing, because at the end of the day, we're kind of detectives. So we're trying to you know, basically build a case for, for what's going on in the market. And, you know, looking at multiple different metrics kind of pointing to the same thing could give us more confidence in, in kind of our thesis. Next up, we look at short term holder realized price or cost basis. So this is essentially an on chain volume weighted average price um, or VWAP. Uh, based on the entities that have been active in the market for less than 155 days. And interestingly, this has served as uh, a bull market support band historically. And we'll, we'll look at, um, oops. So note in 2017, we bounced off of this band multiple times. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, and then once we broke this, we kind of broke market structure. And then we had a failed underside retest of the band. And that was kind of bare confirmation that we got. Uh, and then we had three other, re, you know, retest or rejections of the line. Uh, and then we finally broke above um, at the bottom of the bear market that kind of signaled that we were, we were coming out of the bottom. Um, you know, we, we had this little mini 2019 bull market, but coming off of that, we had a failed underside uh, retest of, of, the, of the bull market support band. Uh, and then we, we flipped back above it and kind of got that confirmation after uh, March, 2020, uh, tapped it again, September, hovered above it throughout the early stages of the, of the bull market earlier this year broke below um, in May. And at this time, you probably would have been cautious, right? Because now we've broken below the trend. Um, and then we got back above and then got that confirmation at the end of September. So, you know, looking for, as we just talked about con confluence, we talked about several different metrics now that have kind of pointed to at the end of September, we've gotten bullish confirmation or, or confirmation of us being kind of in this broader market uh, bull trend. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, currently, the bull market support band sits at 53K. Uh, and, you know, this, this kind of aligns with A, some technical support that we have there, as well as the $1 trillion market cap threshold for Bitcoin. So I'm not saying it's going to tap this. Uh, I've been averaging in buys since we got below 60K, not financial advice. Uh, but, you know, I think as long as we're kind of holding above 53K on daily closes, which is important, as long as we're holding above that on closes, uh, you know, I don't think that's uh, anything to be concerned about. So now let's zoom out to kind of get the bigger picture. So on a similar note of realized price or cost basis, we can look at on-chain cost basis ratio. And this compares the realized price of short-term holders, which is what we just looked at above, to the realized price of long-term holders. It's by running the ratio of the two, we get a really interesting macro oscillator. And what we see is whenever short-term holder cost basis uh, blows out and overextends long-term holder cost basis, it's time to be cautious. And when long-term holder cost basis crosses below short-term holder, it's time to accumulate. And note that we never really reached the overheated zone earlier this year. And we had a reset similar to 2013, as you can see here, here, you know, highlighted by this, these, these blue circles. Um, but it did only take three months in 2013 to go back from this kind of reset uh, to all the way back up to the kind of overheated area. So you know, although, although we're in really healthy territory for this metric right now, uh, it's not to say that you know, we can't revert back to the kind of overheated territory quickly. 
Next up, we have MVRV Z-score, which compares realized price to market cap and then adjusted for volatility. And, and this kind of paints a very similar picture. So essentially what we're looking at is, you know, whenever the speculative bid overshoots the actual amount of capital, uh, new capital inflow to the market, uh, we can kind of gauge when we're kind of stating in a, in a uh, trading in a kind of state of exuberance or, or when the market's getting overheated. Uh, the, the idea behind this is, Realized cap is essentially showing the amount of capital stored in the network versus prices, the speculative bid that's that's uh, you know placed on Bitcoin. And so when that speculative uh, you know bid kind of overshoots the actual you know capital that's sustaining that, well, by definition, you know we're, we're kind of overextended or overheated, if you will. So you can see we have these really clear signatures. Uh, 2013 on the two double pumps. 2017 kind of tapped into that earlier this year, but not really punched through or any kind of euphoric spike as we saw previously. Um, and for now, you know, we got this reset and now we're sitting kind of in, in neutral territory and we still have a, a ways to go. Next up, we look at our illiquid supply shock ratio, which is a metric I created with Willy Woo over the summer. And we're still based off of this, uh, aren't seeing any sign of concern. So this compares highly liquid and liquid entities to illiquid entities. So in layman's terms, uh, weak to strong hands. Highly liquid entities take in and, and only hold at least uh, or less than 25% of the coins they take in. Uh, liquid guys, 50-50, and illiquid guys hold at least 75% of the coins they take in. So for every four coins they take in, they only hold three. Uh, and so currently we're at 2020, and, and this is running the ratio between the illiquid and highly liquid and liquid guys. We're currently at 2021 all-time highs and, and climbing, as you can see here. Uh, but what we're watching for is a strong decline within a week or two. So that 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 occurred a you know here at the at the top of 2017, as you can see, and then as well, uh, this is the leading indicator before the drop uh, beginning in, you know earlier this year in May. Uh, I got into on-chain analytics like two weeks before this, but you know kind of wish I had this metric back then. Uh, Would have been cautious if if you know based off of this. Uh, and then this was also a leading indicator of the summer. We had this bullish divergence. Uh, between the oscillator, which was making higher, you know, higher lows, meaning that, you know, long-term guys were locking up supply. Meanwhile, price was grinding down. Then we had the supply shock effect in the market where we had 10 straight up days where we kind of corrected for that supply demand imbalance. Uh, and then also note the kind of similar uh, signature in the two peaks, right? You see here, 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 here. Uh, but the only difference is that in 2017, we kind of had this bear div, right? Where, where we kind of made a lower high. Meanwhile, now, as we just mentioned, we're making a higher high. So just something interesting to note. And as we've been watching like a hawk, long-term holders have continued to distribute as per natural bull market behavior. Remember, long-term holders scale into weakness and scale out into strength. And last year, they started distributing in late October, as you can see right here. So upticks in old coins are also you know, being reflected in coin days destroyed. Dormancy, which is coin days destroyed, adjusted for volume, uh, average spent output lifespan, average uh, spent volume age bands, uh, spent output age bands. So like, I don't know that's just a bunch of jargon, but what I'm just saying is like, uh, you're, you're seeing across the board that older coins are starting to be spent. Um, and when they start to be spent, this is kind of counterintuitive to what you see in the chart. You think green is good, red is bad. It's actually a good thing when they start to distribute just based off of the kind of natural behaviors that we see. Um, you know, looking back, this would have kind of been a red flag that you started to see them accumulate. Usually they start accumulating, as we just mentioned, into weakness. So, you know, where I'll start to become cautious if we start to see a real strong imprint, like right here in January, where you see the large kind of, not capitulation, but uh, large distribution from these long-term holders. And then last, we look at dormancy flow, which compares the market cap to the USD value of annualized dormancy. So we just talked about dormancy is the uh, volume adjusted version of coin days destroyed. Um, and dormancy is, is, is an, you know, a, a nice way to kind of gauge, once again, the, the uh, spending of older coins in the market. Um, and so you know, using this oscillator, we can kind of gauge the kind of overheated or, or uh, undervalued state of the market. Uh, as you can see, this this kind of this threshold across the board is is like a level that this is you know historically interacted really strongly with. So you'll see between the two kind of 2013 pumps, uh, those are, those were we kind of bounced off of, uh, broke into like bullish territory once we got above that um, in 2015 into 2016, bounced off of this in 2017 twice, broke this when we broke market structure. Uh, got rejected off this in 2019 at the top of the uh, little mini bull run, as well as we got rejected off this uh, earlier this year. So, you know, even if you want to make the argument that, you know, because we bounced off this, the last two kind of major peaks for, uh, you know, for any kind of price rally that Bitcoin has had, um, you know, even if you want to make that argument, we're still less than halfway between that and the accumulation zone. So, you know, 
whether you want to look at it like that or say we could potentially, you know, come all the way up to where we did in 2017 or 2013. Um, you know, we're still far from kind of this overheated area. Uh, one interesting thing, though, we have been making lower highs. So if you see here, 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 um, you know, that is one interesting thing to know if you kind of drew a trend line. Um, you know, I think there's a there's a potential case to be made that, you know, if you were to draw that trend line that we kind of peak out maybe right around here. But, you know, we'll see. Point is, though, you know, we're still kind of have a lot of uh, runway to go for the for the bull market. Uh, and as always, be sure to check out Blake's section on the Bitcoin related equities. He always does a great job. Hopefully we can get him on here uh, at some point to kind of talk through his section. Uh, and then keep in mind, we have our Blocker Intelligence uh, Indicator Dashboard coming out within the next two weeks. Uh, I'm really looking forward to dropping that and uh, getting kind of the feedback from the community. And, uh, you know, the, the way we're kind of looking at this is, you know, we're building this for you guys. And so, you know, whenever whenever we launch the V1 version, you know, there's certain things that you want added or certain, you know, aspects of it that you that you don't like, you know, feel free to, to critique it whenever we do drop it. And, and we're looking forward to kind of, you know, tailoring that to be the best product for you guys. So looking forward to releasing that very soon. And with that, you know, I hope you guys all have a great weekend and uh, we'll talk next week. Take care. Yeah.